that's going on in your life, there's a word on it. And if you seek God day and night and meditate on his word, the Bible says that you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. But you have to know it. You have to mutter it. You have to meditate on it. It has to be a part of you. You have to walk the word out. It's just not enough of knowing the word, but you have to apply the word. You have to walk in the word. You have to obey the word. This is the word of God. This is what God spoke to us concerning us. And the more you know his word, here it is, the more you know God. That's why today people are falling off and doing their own thing. Because now they don't have nothing that will give them the sticking power. The stick to that it takes. Because the enemy's job is to divide us and to conquer us. That we may not be able to unify in the spirit in the bond of peace. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the word of God. From the subject, come out of Lodiba. Come out of Lodiba. Come out of Lodiba. This is a story about friendship. This is a story about promise and a story about grace. A story about compassion and forgiveness this story is about hope last week we dealt with David in chapter 7 as he um, brings the Ark of Covenant into the capital city of Jerusalem how he danced before the Lord with all of his might because of the presence of God was in the presence of God's people. And then we move to the next chapter. David now sits in the palace and he calls the prophet Nathan, David's servant, and said, um, I want to build God a house. I want to build him a place where the Ark of Covenant can come out of tents since I'm living in Cedar and put the Ark of the Covenant in a house. I want to sort of house the presence of God. And Nathan said, well, King, do what you do. The Lord is with thee. But that night the Lord spoke to um, Nathan and told Nathan that David could not build this house, but I will build David a house. I will make his name great. Um, but David could not build the house of God because David's hands was dirty. Sometimes God will tell you no, but however. He said, David, you cannot build it. However, I will let your son build the house. You ought to be excited about that word, however. I don't deserve... To be doing what I'm doing right now, preacher, however. Talk back to me if you can. In fact, I deserve to be sleeping in my grave, however. God sought fit to allow my golden moments, come on y'all, to last a little while longer. So David goes into prayer of thanks and thanking God how sovereign and how holy and how eternal that God was. And then chapter 8, he goes now to battle. And he overcomes the enemies and overcome Moab and kills the Philistines in chapter 8. And he goes to war. David was a man of war. So after he continued to overthrow his enemies, glory to God, he's now sitting in his palace and he's reflecting over the covenant that he had made with his good friend Jonathan. Very seldom in, in, in David's profile do we see such kindness. Um, David is generally thought of of the shepherd boy who slew the giant and thought of 
of the man who committed adultery with Bathsheba and had Bathsheba's son, I mean, father, husband rather, killed on the front line. We sort of think of David as, as the man whose children had incest with each other. And we think of David and remember David from dancing before the Lord and bringing the Ark of the Covenant and remember David as a warrior and we remember David as a man that had many wives and we remember David as a friend and here we are in this particular text that brings us to this story the friendship he has with Jonathan that brings us to our particular passage it's incredibly important to understand that when you cut a covenant with somebody, you have to learn how to keep the covenant. If I got a witness here, it's too often in our friendships when we don't do what each other wants us to do, we cut those relationships off. So Jonathan and, and, and David, amen, cut a covenant. They cut a covenant that if any one of them would at, outlast um, the other that they will take care of each other's family. Jonathan and David, they were so close, many people thought they were lovers. Their souls connected. They were good friends and they had a covenant relationship despite of King Saul trying to kill David. Let me remind you now, King Saul is Jonathan's father. He was the choice of the people of God's first king. The people chose King Saul, but God chose David. And while David was a shepherd boy tending the dirty sheep, God anointed him to be the king. And David now was so anointed that King Saul put out plan and plot and scheme to take David's life. It's funny because when God removes the power or the anointing on you, God can allow you to work and still be fired. Come on, God can remove his spirit away from you and allow you to continue to work. So the Bible says that King Saul began to try to kill David because now David has been chosen to be the king. And despite of... Saul trying to kill David, despite of Saul trying to take David out, amen, David still loved his son, Jonathan. Jonathan saved David's life from his own father. Solomon, I mean, um, Jonathan's father, Saul, tried to kill David at least 23 times. Let me tell you something. Hate will cause people to want you dead. Have I got a witness here? Hate will cause people to want to take you out. Amen. Jealousy is a bad mamma jamma. Come on, talk back to me if you can. The Bible talks about jealousy. It's as cruel as the grave. Jealousy will cause you to do some things that will blow folk mind. You, you wouldn't imagine in a million years of the person that's sitting beside you may be jealous of you because of what God is doing in your life and what God has brought you from and what God has put inside of you. Everybody don't like you because you arrived at the place you are. You have to make sure you get grounded in God because folk will turn their back on you in the heat of the day. But David and Jonathan, they cut a covenant. Never cut a covenant and cut the covenant. Never cut the covenant with somebody and then cut the covenant. See, covenant is not about a feeling. Covenant is about a contract. Come on, say amen. Covenant is about your word. If, 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 if David had any excuse to cut covenant, this was a good excuse. Your daddy trying to kill me. I can't hang out with you. Your own daddy trying to take me out because he does not like because I've been chosen over him. That's the reason why David's wife, Macau, was looking out of the window and jealous of him because he chose David over her father. Have I got a witness there? So the Bible talks about their covenant. Incidentally, 
um, we need to see this because it, it, it stands a challenge to us as to how we operate with our friends mm -hmm. and what kinds of promises have we made, kept, or, and broken. Talk back to me if you can. We have folk that make promises to you. You had folk that stand right up in my pulpit and tell me what they're going to do, where they're going to be. I'll be with your pastor. I'm going to send you money, but they break promises. Come on, y'all. We are certainly living in a time where all relationships are suspect and challenged. Come on, talk back to me here. Um, you, you, you can't even have a pure friend these days unless they think something is going on. If you got two brothers that's close, they gay. If you got a man or a woman close, he hitting her. Y'all not helping me here. You can have a pure platonic relationship in these days. It's suspect. It's challenge. Amen. And, and folk are just are, are very leery who they connect with because they've been beaten so many times. Come on. Folk have lied to you and sold you a dream. Say, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And then when the rubber meets the road, they roll out never to see you another day in your life. So now you're sitting here preserved, not trusting anybody because the last relationship turned out sour. And darn it, if I'm going to go into the same way I went in the last time, so I'm going to make sure what you're saying is real. So stop listening to what people say and begin to watch what they do when they don't go their way they turn their back on you they'll break covenant they'll run away from you they'll leave you all by yourself because they really didn't mean it the first time they were just emotional glory to god so they said some stuff that came out of their mouth but you watch people when the heat turns up on them you watch people how they turn on you like a new york hot second y'all don't believe me you just keep on living keep putting yourself out there keep putting your trust in man uh, I love people, but I trust God. Yeah. Come on, talk back to me. People will break your heart. People will make you lose your mind. People will make you pull your hair out. You'll find yourself on the floor picking cotton because folk then promised you something and cannot deliver what they promised. Glory to God. Never over promise and under deliver. You have to be able to keep a covenant in the time in which we live today. But the Bible says it's prophesied that there will be called a word apostasy that folk will fall away from the faith and in, in, in effect they will fall away from you. Um, you got to see this and you know what else that baffles me Jason? People want you to be mad at your friend because they are. Yeah, I miss that. You'll get that at home. And they do not seem to understand it when you say, but that doesn't have anything to do with me. Um, because you got a problem with him. That's you and him. But he and I, we are cool. And I shouldn't be mad at them because you got a problem with them. People want to be mad at the whole family because have problems with one member in the family. Oh, quiet. It's sad, y'all, that we just can't seem to say separate and deal with the issues that are before us don't let everybody be mad at everybody because you mad at everybody i'm not mad at sister josephine because y'all got a problem sister josephine cool with me you go deal with in fact don't tell me about josephine you go tell josephine about josephine and don't talk about me till you talk to me then you'll realize where i am for real so the Bible talks about this covenant and people will, will, will cause you to lose your mind because they break covenant. This is a time of, of much turmoil in our text. Saul has failed as the first king and David is now king of Israel. Watch this. Now at this time, Jonathan and Saul, they die at the battle in Jezreel on Mount Gilboa glory to God and now Mephibosheth is at the age of five years old you have to see this because it was chaotic the king is dead the, the prince is dead Jonathan David's friend is dead and now what happens to us glory to God so the Bible says a nurse takes Mephibosheth on her hip and while running from for their lives the Bible says that she drops Mephibosheth uh, I got to ask you a question. Have you ever been dropped? Um, 
let, let me talk to you for a minute. Have, have, have you ever uh, been dropped by someone who loved you but couldn't handle you? Have you ever been dropped by someone who, who cared for you but couldn't carry you? And in haste, the Bible says that she picked up Mephibosheth at five years old and she dropped him and he was crippled for the rest of his life. Uh, so while she saves his natural life, glory to God, because you got to understand, um, when they hear news, watch this, when Jonathan and Saul goes to war, Mephibosheth is five years old, so he had to have a nurse to take care of him. So when they get news that Jonathan and Saul gets killed in Jezreel, um, the nurse picks him up glory to God, amen, and take him off and drop him. Because listen, when the king was dead, they was coming after the whole family. When the regime changed back in that day, when king changed, my God, they will kill off all of the descendants, everybody in the house, so no descendant will raise up and try to take the throne. Are y'all hearing me here? So while she saves him running off, he, she saves his natural life, but he is now crippled for life. And that's my first point. Saved but damaged. It's on the screen. Say that. Saved but damaged. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You saved right now, but your past is damaged. There's some things that you're going through right now. You saved, but many of us can be saved and hypocritical. You're damaged. You can be saved and, and, and full of slander. Come on, talk back to me. Full of gossip. You can be full of complaint. Amen. You can be saved and gripped by all kinds of things. You're damaged. You've gone through some stuff. You've gone through some pain, some hurt. You've gone through some abandonment you've been embarrassed you're isolated you're desolated you've been depraved by some things you've been i ain't got no help many of you have been molested and raped and and took it for bad your daddy left you your mama left you ah god you had to take care of the permit when the permit ought to take care of you damage saved but still broken still crippled still going through hell talk back to me if you can i know you're looking pretty you're sitting up off in here like you got yourself together but deep down under your skin there's some damage there um, your emotions are not healthy come on talk back to me if you can damaged but saved still going to church still praising God still reading your words still praying but damaged on the inside um, you feel good on the outside but your, um, your, your self esteem is low folk now have humiliated you and embarrassed you and calls you everything but a child of God but I stop by to tell you the same God that saved you can deliver you. The God that I serve has no respect the person. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Y'all gonna make me preach in this house in a minute. I, I know you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost, but every now and then you have some problem. Mm. Every now and then you go through some struggle. Talk back to me, somebody. Every now and then you're challenged with your flesh. Every now and then folk get on your nerve, damage. Yeah. Uh, you need some damage control. You need somebody called the Holy Spirit that will erupt inside of you. That will cause your, your spirit man to rise up to be healthy in the things in God. Have I got a witness here? Do I got anybody that will realize the day at any given day you can be damaged? Your thinking can be damaged. Your mind can be damaged. Y'all not helping me here. I'm glory to God. But I'm so glad, glory to God, that God will call you out of the darkness and move you you into the marvelous light then translate you into his dear son and then put you back together again I ain't got no help here I heard um, Jeremiah say when he went down to the potter's house I'm preaching here he looked at the potter and the clay that was on the wheels but the clay in his hands was damaged it was messed up it was jacked up it was disfractured it was dismantled but the Bible says that the potter didn't throw the clay away but it made it over again that's why i'm so glad god will remake you he will redo you he will give you a make i ain't got no help here god will shape you and mold you and tell you who god wants you to be i know you're looking good now but you remember when you were
were in that well of depression ready to give up and die if God had not pulled you out with your crazy self you would have lost your cotton picking mind but you ought to thank God right there where you are that you're still alive to talk about it you're still alive to give God praise about it some of y'all ought to take a flashback on the damaged stuff that you done left and God got you I ain't got no help here you still don't know when to shout I said some of you need to have a flashback and remember how bad you were how low down you were y'all not helping me here but God with his sovereign mercy picked you up turned you around gave you another song y'all not helping me here and that's why you ought to praise God every now and then because if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side yes I was damaged yes I was tore up from the floor yes I was hoe chasing free basing cocaine sniffing weed nipping pill popping weed chopping y'all not helping me here but when God changed my life he gave me another chance aren't you glad you serve a God of a second chance I'm saved but I'm damaged but I'm on my way I'm on my way to a blessed place. I'm on my way to my deliverance. I'm on my way to my, I got no help here, prosperity. And when I get there, I'm going to lift up my hands. I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to give God praise forevermore because God's been good to me. Shake somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, God's been good to me. I didn't make it here all by myself. I made it on damaged pieces, step by step, one day at a time. Y'all not helping me here. If you could have seen me where I was, you'll give God praise for where I am now. Say, but damage, glory to God. Got damaged friends and damaged relationships and damaged jobs. Y'all not helping me here. But God told me to tell you the season about the change in your life. God going to send you somebody that's healthy. saved but but damaged glory to God saved his life but dropped him and crippled him from the rest of his life got away but still damaged uh, um, right now your mind damaged because you can't get by what you did yesteryear every now and then you get higher and higher in God but that damaged area come and touch you on the shoulder and say you ain't all of that you're still damaged the devil is alive for the Bible says that he the son set free is free indeed I ain't got no help here do I got a Bible reader here won't you smack your neighbor by the head and say neighbor I may be damaged but I'm still saved how my damage my God is not going to take my salvation mm. because on a Friday I feel like preaching right there y'all um, he died for my sins uh, he died for my damaged mess in my life so then I believe that Mephibosheth glory to God would still be in trouble if David did not keep his promises. He would still be in trouble if David kept promises like we keep them today. Come on, y'all, my brothers and sisters. We have trouble sometimes keeping our promises. Uh, I can't hear nobody. We say stuff but don't really mean it. Mm. We, we say stuff while we are under the emotional stress of life. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'll be there. God, not helping me here get the mic in front of the church yeah i'll be here i'm going i got your back pastor i'm gonna give you this money i'm gonna do that can't find the negro <laughs> but i've learned my god through my life of living <laughs> don't put your trust in man <laughs> i'm thus heard solomon said trust in the lord with all thine heart <laughs> do i got a bible reader in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path <laughs> i feel preaching in this place today when the Bible says now uh, in the face of David with the challenges of keeping his promises uh, now that his friend is dead David keeps his promises because uh, I come to tell you kings usually destroy families uh, but there was a promise between Mephibosheth's daddy Jonathan and David and David said I got a promise my man glory to God told him way back in the day when he was trying to protect me from his father that I was going to keep his family in perfect peace uh, the Bible says now in the, in the first chapter is there anybody left 
uh, in Saul's house that I could show kindness um, to them for Jonathan's sake. Is anybody left? Is anybody still here? In other words, I know a couple folk got killed because that's how it's supposed to be. Mm. Um, if I'm the king, now that you used to be the king, I'm going to kill everybody in your family. Because I want nobody in your family trying to get this throne again. Uh, but David now sits in his palace and says, oh my God, my man Jonathan dead and gone. That was my boy. That was my road dog. That was my homie. Is there anybody left? My God, in Saul's house so I can show my kindness for my brother's sake. I got to take care of his family because I made a covenant with him. And, and I could just roll out because his daddy tried to kill me 23 times. I could just leave him there and let him fend for himself. But I'm a covenant man. I'm a compassionate man. I'm a man full of grace. I'm a man. God, not helping me here. They got to do what God has done to me because they remember how bad he was. And oftentimes I ask God, how in the world? Oh my God, that Jonathan, I mean David and Saul, both of them was disobedient. I was like, God, what's the difference here? And I heard and I discovered that when Saul lied, glory to God, my God, when Saul was disobedient, he lied. But when David was disobedient, he cried. Uh, Y'all yeah, remember according to your tender curses and your loving kindness. He said, create in me. Y'all yeah, not helping me here. David had a repentive heart. Um, David knew how to get down on his knees and say, God, I'm sorry. I messed up. I did it wrong that way. I didn't do the right thing. It was me, oh Lord. It wasn't her. I did it. I messed up. It was me. Yeah, but Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And whatever you do, don't take your spirit it away from me yeah you can take my car you can take my husband you can take my wife you can take everything i got but don't take your spirit from me because if i know if i still got your spirit everything you gave me i can get it back uh, or else i get double for my trouble i'm restored unto me the joy of my salvation created me a clean heart we knew a right spirit in me david had a repentive heart and he remember how good god been to him so i said i got to be good to somebody here i ain't got no help but i'm preaching so david now he sends his servants down to lodibar uh, a city east of the jordan river a city that was characterized right now by its barrenness a wasteland of devastation somebody shout loaded by i know i'm boring y'all right now because i'm excited because you don't know how good god's been to me that's why i'm excited the way i'm excited and if you got a preacher don't move glory to god he must be dead uh, let me help you here the priest now back in the old um testament will go into holies of holiness of uh, the holies of holies there was different sections now only the priest can go there to offer sacrifices for the people of God and when the priests went in there they would put bells on the bottom of their robes which mean they had to move let them let people know that they wasn't dead and then they would wrap a rope around them just in case they wasn't right and died so they could drag them out I can't understand a dry dead preacher you ain't got no bell bottoms on but for me and my house we gonna get live y'all not helping me here and some of y'all right now um, you need to take that rope and drag that dead person off your road and say if you don't want to praise them I'll praise them by myself ah, I gave you that for free ah, glory to God touch your neighbor and say that was for free look at your neighbor and say neighbor are, are you dead well let me take this rope around you and drag you out of this church because I need somebody with some bells on make some noise or something I'm with your dead self open your mouth or something and tell God I thank you that's too much for you I know it I'm almost out of here so his search now took his servants watch this here to load it bar somebody shout load it bar his search took his service to Lodibar um, Lodibar a city in the midst of Lodibar a city in the midst of wilderness Lodibar the place of no pasture the place originally of no bread uh, no greenery there it was desolate in Lodibar hmm. uh, you got to see this because now Mephibosheth he went to Lodibar this place at five years old hiding now his name literally uh, means to wash away all sorrow but yet he's hiding he's incognito 
Oh, you have to see this here. Mephibosheth down in Lodi Bar lost his rank and uh, lost his prestige, lost his respectability. He lost his reputation. He lost his superiority. He lost his self wheel down in Lodiba. Ah, y'all not helping me here. Mephibosheth went from living in the palace to hiding out with the family friend. Mephibosheth went from the prince to servant, from powerful to afraid. So our text says that Mephibosheth is found in Lodiba, afraid for his life. And that's my second point. Glory to God is safe but doubting. It's on the screen safe but doubting he didn't even know how safe he was so he doubted my God his deliverance uh, David rolls up on him now um, Mephibosheth don't even know who David is don't even know the covenant he had with his daddy so he doesn't know how this is going to be turned out so they called him now to the palace here come Mephibosheth crippled on both of his feet he's scared to death ah glory to God and that's what I want to tell you doubt can cause you to miss your blessing mm. Uh, you can be in the arms of God, safe, my God, and still doubt. <laughs> doubt will cause you to be fearful um, in so many ways. <laughs> he was safe and didn't even know it. Mm. That's why it's important now for you to have faith in God. You can be in the arms of God, glory to God, and still doubt in God. Not believing that God can do what he says he's going to do. Uh, see, you need faith to please God. The devil is after your faith. That's why it's important for you to come here to have your faith increase. Um, talk back to me if you can. Um, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need my faith increase. Because without faith, you begin to doubt God. And that's the worst sin in the world is unbelief. Everybody moving, but touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I still know where I'm going. Mm. Uh, stuff can move out of place, but when you're anchored in God, God was some kind of way to put you back on focus um, that's what the devil wants you to do to get unfocused so he can steal your faith um, you got to keep your eyes on your faith for the Bible says we walk by uh, and not by sight if I can do it myself I don't need God if I can pay for it myself why would I need to go but you got to learn how to trust God when you can't trace God and it's not about a feeling it's a fact that God will make a way y'all don't want to help me preach here uh, I wish I had some old folk in here that can testify because you've been through the storm and the rain but God you still made it uh, I wish somebody right now if I can give you this mic so you can tell folk how I was back in yesteryear but you still believed in God and now look at you you're looking good you're smelling good you got a clap on your hands you got a smile on your face you got your new little job now you got your boost and you living happy ever after glory to God but I come to tell you the devil gonna test your faith that very thing you love God will snatch it to make sure you believe him for real don't put all your trust in your stuff don't put all your trust in your man your woman God will snatch him in a New York second and make sure your faith is genuine he will test your faith he will make sure you go through some stuff and your faith is not dictated by what you have because you got real faith when you ain't got nothing but got joy y'all yep, not helping me here most of y'all just happy because what's happening make you happy but when it stop happening you ain't happy no more but when stuff ain't happening I still got my joy I need somebody to grab your neighbor by the hand and squeeze their hand real tight and tell them after all I've been through I still got joy because the faith of God gives me the ability to believe that one day everything is going to be alright have I got a 